So how do you deal with the projection of the media onto you in a position where you have to almost be perfect? And then how do you do, deal with that in the club as well? Yeah, that's, that's, it's very hard. You can't control the media, unfortunately. Um, you learn that very quickly. They're going to perceive you however you need to be perceived. It's just how you deal with it yourself mentally. The club's very good at a young age, good and bad. The club's doing whatever they can to protect you, but protecting you sometimes really turns you into a very much straight, this is a perfect media person that doesn't say anything. And we've all seen it. Well, I do it as well. Press conferences, they'll come in and answer you just your robotic answers. Don't give them anything. Because it's just the, the media can perceive you in the wrong way. So to save us, they just go, look, boys, this is the media training. When they ask you something, it's a very straight bad answer. Never about yourself. It's always about the football club. Um, it's always about someone else and move on to the next question. Don't get into it too much. That's pretty much what you taught. Um, and that's to protect. But unfortunately, that, that takes, you know, the individual side. It takes the personality out of people in the media. So yeah, that's the, the hardest thing is one, trying to help kids. Um, and us as young kids, but also you, you want personality. You, you need it. Um, it's great to see. But that's a, you, you're always scared. You're always, you'll do something, go, oh, oh, I just showed myself a little bit there. Is this going to be taken in the wrong way or the right way? Um, sometimes it's the right way. Um, and normally if you're playing well and winning, it's the right way. As soon as you lose, it's the wrong way. So I'm sort of just starting to get to the, the stage where I, I don't care really, um, what they think at all. I've just got to be myself as much as possible and, um, I think not being perfect is, is, is the best. Um, cause no one is. And I hate the way that they portray people as, as perfect. Cause there's nothing, nothing wrong with not being perfect. There's no, yeah, like I said, there, there is no one who is. I think it's great to show a bit of vulnerability and, and a bit of personality. Cause this, uh, everyone in here would rather see someone with a bit of personality than not. But whoever's doing it, so if I do show person, I'm taking a risk that I'm going to get hammered in some way or portrayed in a diff- in a certain way. But, at the end of the day, for me, it's the people that are close to me that know me. That's all I really care about. I couldn't care what um, Joe Bowes read in the West Australian or on Channel 7. It's great. You've, you can have your own opinion of me, but I know what type of person I am. And I know my friends and family do. Uh, and that's sort of what matters. And that, that's what I, the piece I was explaining before with these young, young fellas coming in. And how do we, what do you value? Do you value what your friends and family think? Or do you value what social media thinks or media thinks or some punter down the road who had some opinion who's never played footy in his whole life, but he's telling you what you should and shouldn't do. You know, you could read into everything. There's so much, so much access to all that sort of stuff. And we, I, I still go through it now. And a lot of it, like, like I said, is when you're not playing well or performing, a lot of it's negative and you keep negative, slowly keep just talking a little. Then all of a sudden you are listening to Joe Blow. Oh, I thought maybe he's right. Maybe I'm bloody, I'm past it. Maybe I'm old. I'm mean, 29. <laughs> old, but in footy terms, you are getting old when you're 30. But you know, you can you can take that if you want, or you can just dismiss it, and then you go to your go to your core people. So my my core people is my probably my dad, my best mate, um, and Bunga Shannon Hearn at the football club, and Josh Kennedy. If I've got if I feel like that's that might be what they're saying might be true, I'll go speak to those boys and go, look, what do you think? Like, is this are they on the mark or are they way off? And a lot of the time, it's like, mate, way off. You watch things will change. You'll start playing well in three weeks, and they they're going to lord you again, and you'll be they'll put a statue up of you on the bloody, <laughs> you know. That's just the way it is. But they're the key people that I speak to, and same same with business. I'm, I'm I hope everyone in here has got someone that they can lean on with things and decisions. Because if if you are, which I'm sure you all are, leaders of your of your businesses or whatever you've you've got going on, it you've got to make tough decisions. Um, you've got to do things, you know, that probably. You got to do it for the benefit of the company, not what you really want to do. I, mate, so the best is hiring friends. You got a mate, and he's you love him to death, and he works. Oh, I bloody love him, but he's not good for our company. I need to put man your hat on and go, mate. I'm, I'm sorry, I have to let you go. Not fit into the values of what we're doing. You got to make those tough decisions, and it eats you, it hurts you because you, that's what you've got to do. Um, so it's always good to have someone that you can lean on and go, look, I've. I've done this, I've done that, and just to reassure that you've done the right thing, um, even though sometimes it feels like you're not. Uh, and that's the that's a balancing act of, of obviously being a leader as well. I, I'm really good mates with all the boys, and 
probably two good mates at times that you you've got to really put your hat on and go, no, nah, this is not right. We can't do that. Which yeah, you, you do you do it yourself away at it, but it's just having your core people that you you value um, value their opinion. Um, and yeah, a lot of it's internal at our footy club. What do we value in, inside those four walls rather than externally? So the question is around handling uh, handling nerves. Um, for context, obviously, Ali does a lot of Brazilian jiu-jitsu. So on the mats, if you're getting nervous before you go, there's a different person in training and prep versus the person that shows up on, on game day. Very common thing in our workplace as well and in our competition and, and throughout the AFL. Um, well, yeah, it's uh, the, there's different ways of handling it. Um, mine is embrace it. So the pressure's going to come. That's just the way it is. And nerves come. Um, anyone that says they don't get nervous, I, I personally feel like they're lying because they, they do, but they just deal with it a lot better than others. Um, the first thing is probably understanding what type of person you are. Some people, I know, I get really nervous sometimes. I'll spew up, but I know that's okay. So my thing is, it's all right. These are nerves. Um, the only reason I'm nervous is because I care and I want to perform. And... It's just how, yeah, how you, how you deal with it. Um, and different ways of, of dealing with it is first, first of all, just embracing it and going, this is normal. This is fine. Don't stress out because this is a normal thing that happens to 99% of people who are about to run out. Or if I put it in football terms, um, we're about to run out. I'm my opponent that I'm playing against. He's probably just as nervous as what I am. And then from there, for me, it's all right. The nerves are in. If everything's going bad, what do I need to do to focus in and narrow it down? And I've got key points. I spoke about it before. Aggression is one of them. Communication is another one. So if I get outside myself as an individual, sometimes you just you start forgetting about your nerves a bit more. If I'm communicating as much, I, I, I'm starting to get really nervous. I'm going to communicate. I need to talk. I need to ask one of these young fellas how they're going, how are you feeling, you ready for the game, you, you switched on. But internally, sometimes you're nervous as hell. The way you're nervous in these kids. I'm like, look at this kid going, he's not even nervous. <laughs> and this bloody kid going to go, he's going to kill it today. But they're, they're some of the things that I do is sort of find a couple of key points that helps you, one, focus, and two, just ease your nerves a little bit. Um, like communication, obviously, is mine. A lot of boys are different. Music, boys listen to music just before they're about to, to go out. Meditation, a lot of boys meditate, do mindfulness breathing, a lot of different things. So before we start our games, we have meditation sessions, which are voluntary for, for players, so you don't have to go do it, but they're just mindfulness breathing, um, stuff to help calm those nerves. I'm the officer, I feel like it increases my nerves because I'm just sitting there thinking about this whole game the whole time where I'm more, can I just be busy? Um, and that's why I need to keep my mind going. If I'm busy and communicating, I'm not really thinking about dabbling too deep into into it, into everything. But yeah, they're, they're, they're some of the things I do. But I'm, the biggest one's just embracing it. I think a lot of people try and push it. I'm not nervous. I'm, I don't get scared. I'm, I'm like, fine. I'm, they end up being the ones that are the most rattly. Just embrace it. It's fine. There's nothing wrong with being nervous. I actually like, yeah, look, nerves is good. When I'm not nervous is the worst games I've played because it just means nothing. You're going, oh, fine, I don't really care what happens today where you should care. So, yeah, that's why the grand final, you, your nerves are through the roof because you care about winning this game the most. But, yeah, key points and probably just getting outside yourself a little bit. So maybe jiu-jitsu, it might be between the coach and the um and the student. Maybe it's that. That's just, that's just create more communication. It might be that. He might... You know, the individual might not like communicating at all. It might be triggers. Um, we have triggers and some boys write stuff on their um, wrists just to really remind themselves, this is my trigger. All right, my trigger is grab my shorts. They grab the shorts, rub the shorts, um, pull the socks up. Some of them doing their hair, whatever. It, it could be anything. But just little triggers to help switch you back on and, and not get caught up in your nerves too much. A big one, it's never as bad as or as good as it seems. It's not. Um, and my thing is for my footy and in business, it's we're going to let's learn something from there. Whatever's, whatever's happening with these nerves, everyone's the, the pressure's rising and everyone's getting a bit more nervous. It's more, let's just calm down. Let's just have a real good look at this straight back to our KPIs and, and, and what we sort of our main, main things we want to get done for business perspective. What are the three, what are the three things we want to achieve out of this? Whatever it is, these are the three things, right? Let's just implement these three things. And that helps settle people's nerves because a lot of it's all result driven. Obviously, they're looking at that, whatever it is, it might be the bottom line, it might be the revenue, it might be, you know, how many jobs do they get in or leads do they get this, this month? Did they get enough? Or didn't? Well, if you're still doing your KPIs, which you know that work, if you can just go back to them, it should just calm things down a little bit. And then my role is to try and keep everyone calm and I'll get a hold of this. So the COVID is a perfect one. 
everything, who knows what's going to happen in the next three, six, no one knows. If you can tell me, come see me. I'm going to pay you a lot of money <laughs> to do, come help me with my businesses, but no one knows. But you need to get a, you need to get an actual understanding of what's going on. And that's my role to go, hang on. So I've got guys who are worried about, or business partners worried about not having enough work, can't get it with what's going on. We were doing really well. And then I sit back and look and go, well, this is what's happened in the industry. This is what's happened to 28 other plumbing companies. We're not, it's not, not you, mate. You're doing everything right. This is just the industry. This is what's happening. Uh, so that's a part of, of my role to help settle people's nerves. It's more a holistic thing of, of looking at everything. So a little bit different level, level of nerves when you're about to chop someone's brain open and like remove a little part or something like that. It's like, we're just, we're just running businesses. We're just doing stuff. It's, uh, that. Yeah, I've had a few surgeries before and I've rocked up and the heavy metal is blaring. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going, what? Am I in the right spot? And the surgeon, he comes out, I'm like, what's going on? How are you going? <laughs> but that's his, I, that, you can tell that's his nervous thing. All right, I'm about to chop this bloke open. He's a professional football. If I could stuff this guy's career, this is a big thing. So for him, his nerves would be through the roof. But he's his music. All right, let's just relax. I'm just going to embrace this. So I'm, music's a big one. I, I use music a lot. It's good to calm you down a little bit or pump you up. Yeah. So the question about what, what do you do to people want to play for West Coast versus any other team? Yeah, it's a good, great question because a lot of people do. It's easier, it's easier to target people in WA because WA kids and unfortunately it's just nature it's it's a successful thing it's like how oh, I'm, I'm not don't get me wrong I'm not having a crack at at all but if we're just looking at premierships and and success if you're putting the two together obviously people want success um that's what people that's all well, that's what I want anyway so that's probably the easiest way is make sure you win all the time um as much as you can then everyone would naturally want to come to you but it's more a holistic thing now it's more of a the right fit for people and when you're when you're getting drafted, you don't get a choice. You get picked. But um, it's just when you get get there. What does the club? Obviously, you're there to play football. But what else does the the club do for you? And our footy club's massive on it. On the off field side, how can we help externally? Uh, if you do have business interests, if your partner who's in Melbourne, the club will do everything they can to support you in those sort of things. So it's all those little extra things. And for us as 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 leaders, it's more just trying to get that out there. That that's the way we operate at our footy club. Like Simo said, we're a family. Um, we all help each other out and, and we help each other off the field as much as we do on it. Uh, but also, it's more the development as well. Like you're going to go to a good club, you know you're in good hands. Uh, so for me, the development programs that I've gone through has helped me, one, leadership-wise, but two, as a player, develop into it and give me the best opportunity to, to perform and, and become the best football player and person. Um, our footy club's very much good people, not good footballers. Obviously, footballers is what we want, but you want good people. They want, they want to put votes on the pedestal and go, look how good this guy is. He's a ripper. He's played 250 games for us. He's helped out in communities, involved in charities. Um, he's set up his own sort of business. That's, that, they're the type of people they want to breed. Um, and they put a lot of time and effort into it. Heaps. But for us, we need to try to portray that because anyone can say that. It's just how is it actually perceived? And for us, it's more, we need to set the example. The part of the reason I'm here right now because this is the way the club's taught me and what I'm, what I want to do and how I want to help give back as much as I can. Like if someone can take something from this, it'd be awesome. Um, but that's what the club's pushed on you to try and get outside yourself and, and think about things and, um, and do these sort of things. So, um, yeah, my role as a leader is trying to, trying to help portray that as much as possible, which is the truth. I'm not lying at all. I'd, I'd tell you if the club was terrible. I don't, don't worry about that. Uh, sorry. So, question about the four weeks in Phuket. Uh, <laughs> how, how, how pivotal? Where'd you stay? What'd you drink? No. Um, and, and then the effectiveness of that on the outcome that you achieved now, and would you go back and change it? Yeah. I, I don't know if I would change it because I feel like, yeah, I'd, I'll probably, I would probably wouldn't go for four weeks. <laughs> I'd, I'd just train. I would, what I do. But, um, no, I probably wouldn't. I wouldn't change it. Um, cause I feel like everyone's got their own paths and their own ways of, way of getting to places and doing things. And for me, that's a part of my path. That's a part of my story. So I, I no, I probably, I probably wouldn't change it. I'd, I'd just, oh, I'd, <laughs> yeah, it's a tough one cause I'd love to change it, but I, I don't as well. Cause it, it, it's taught me things, um, that others haven't. Um, I'm very much a lived experience guy, whatever, whatever you lived, it's very, you know, 
So for me, that was my lived experience. I was lucky. I, I was lucky that they didn't sack. If I got sacked, yeah, I'm probably changing it. So you do need you do need, you need luck as well. Yeah, the, I think it was just more. Obviously, I wouldn't change the four weeks. Oh no, I'll, no, I'll, I'd keep it. <laughs> I'd keep it. But yeah, my it was just more. How did I? I'm just glad the decisions I made after it because it was a, it's a crossroads. You're going either way. You know, I'm either the plumber in Albany still, so electrician in Albany, or I'm going the direction that I should go. Um, but for me, on that moment, it was your values, and, and a lot of it was put back on all the people that have helped me get to this situation, the opportunity I had. I've had a mate who um, who is from Albany. He got hit. They hit a horse on the way back from Albany, and he's uh, yeah, he's fully disabled now. And he was the biggest Eagles fan. He worked his art. He was the guy who was working his ass off. Never had a speeding ticket. Knew what he was eating. Put everything. He did everything he could to get there. And then it's me, who loved footy, speeding, being an, an idiot. Um, I was out in the weekends partying. He wasn't. I didn't care what I put in my body. I was doing. And then I've got the opportunity out of the both of us. And I'm pissing up the wall. So that for me was, mate, what what are you doing? That's it's not right. Um, and through lived experience, it's not a lucky thing that my mate is like that, but that was really what changed me. And my parents have done everything they can. They put all this time and effort into me. What am I doing? What are you doing? Pissing this up the wall. And when I called my dad, it was the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. Called my old man and told him what's happened. And to dad's credit, he obviously told me what he thought, but he was supportive. He goes, well, what are you going to do about it? And that was my mindset. What am I going to do about it? You can't. It's happened. What am I going to do? I'm not going to. I'm going to whinge about it to everyone. Just fucking pick yourself up and go, go sort it out. Um, I'm very much the same with, with business. We're right, this is fucked up. We stuff this up. All right, great. That's done. Well, how are we fixing it? That's my, I don't know if it stemmed from that, but that's the way I sort of operate with things now is, all right, this happened. Let, let's fix it. Yeah. No need to change it. It's, the decision's been made. Um, you've made it. And my thing is, it, it is what it is. It, the decision's made for whatever reason. You've made a, I made a bad decision. You've made a bad, you've made a good one. Who knows why you made it? But what can you do off the back of it? Um, and how do you how do you attack it? And mine is let's let's figure out a way of fixing it. If it is a bad one, if it's a great decision, you're, you're sitting back going, "How good am I? I'm the bloody smartest guy of all time." But yeah, exactly. I'm the, I'm on the parade with the sunnies, I'm sure. But yeah, um, yeah, that's that's sort of my mindset with it. There's there's a silver lining to everything, and I made a terrible mistake with that, and I learned from it, and um, that's helped me to where I am now. But yeah, that's the, that's, that is just the mindset of it. Uh, mindset's the biggest thing and something that's really, um, I'm looking into a lot more now, uh, for sport, um, and business is just that mindset and the way you, you look at things. There's so many different ways you can look at it. You know, you can look at it heaps of different ways. Um, it's just what way you want to look at it and how do you get yourself in that, in that right mindset. And the, the first thing for me was buying that bike straight away. I went and had a cry down the beach and then called my dad and told him, he said, what are you doing about it? And I literally, Hung up, got the bike, and I just I was in Hillary's and rode rode halfway to Mandra. But that's how silly, that's how silly I was. I had to train the next day. I'm, got, I'm walking into training. I'm like, geez, my, my groin's about to fall off, and I'm far out. What am I doing? I thought I was doing the right thing, but yeah. But that's just you know, I made another bad decision uh, going for a ride. But um, yeah, it's just how you, how you deal with your mindset off the back of it. So yeah. question around, sorry, man. And a question around the communication with the team. So. Uh, with there being over 45 players and team and everything, is everyone communicated to as a communicated to as a group or as an individual? How do we, how do you guys approach it? The, so the role, pretty much, of the, our leadership group is we're the leadership group. We sort of speak to Simo or Adam, coach. Uh, we'll have a leadership meeting, um, have our KPIs or whatever it is, and our role is to get as much feedback from the playing group as possible. And normally, it's the 18 to 25 players who are playing AFL. So we, that's, that's part of my role is relationship. What's going on, boys? What do you think? So we just have general conversations. It's not structured meetings. We don't sit down and go, what do you think, mate? I'm writing it down. It was more, we've all sort of got our boys and, and crew. A lot of mine are backmen. So I'm going through the back, back line and what do you reckon about the game, boys? What do you think? How do you see it? What do you think we're doing well? What do you think we're doing wrong? It's just general chat. And then we'll take that to the, the meeting, get a general consensus of the group. And we'll probably, the four of us will speak and go, what do you reckon? And we'll sort of come up with a, with a general consensus. Um, and then we we'll sort of, we don't present to Simo, but Simo is very much the same. Boys, what's going on? Where, where are we at? What do you think? And we sort of give our sort of opinions. Um, and then from there, he takes it 
takes away and does what he needs to do with it and implements it however he needs. But once he's made the decision, he'll then come to us and go, look, this is what I'm thinking. Do you think this is going to be fine? And we're normally, yeah, yay or nay. But yes, yeah, so it's not normally to the leadership meeting structured. Everything else is just, it's just it, locker room chat. How's everything going? But that's, that's on us. So I'm the same at, at my business. So I guess I'm, Dar- I'm sort of the coach and, and Darcy's sort of lead- my business partner, sort of leadership group. And his role is to, it's very hard for him to go to every single person, but we got supervisors and we got other people in different roles. His role is to get a general consensus on what's going on from everyone else. They present to him, which then I can, rather than me calling 40 people, it's easier to just do it down that line. Uh, so the same with Simon. Instead of him chatting to all 40 of these boys, which he does, he still has general chats, but it's not footy chats. It's more just how you go on. That's what we're there for. And that's our part of our role as leaders is getting a general consensus for the whole team. Um, and what's going on. And then Simo's speaking to the CEO, speaking to the players. He's that middle guy going, well, the CEO wants this. The players want this. Where do we? And he's sort of half in between with that. So, um, yeah, that's sort of, that's how it's structured. Probably one or two structured meetings a week with leadership group. The rest of it's just general, general communication between everyone. And we have line meetings. So line meeting is back line, midfield and forward line. We do have line meetings with line coaches as well. Uh, with that's specific. Where more our leadership roles, more culture. How's the culture? How are the boys? Are we all switched on? Are we all buying in? And um, is anyone stepping outside the the barriers? And um, or it's more game game from the weekend. So, a question just around the communication from yeah. up the top to uh, to the team at the bottom. Is there any uh, limitations? Any tech coming in that will kind of help with that as well? We spoke about it a couple of years ago. Actually, we we're trying to. This is the thing. It's very. It's a very touchy. So there, if you, these are the rules. Um, sometimes you can just bend them a little bit and it can come off or it can get you in a lot of trouble. So we were talking about different things with, cause you could wear GPSs in the back here. So we're talking about different vibrations. So you can vibrate the GPS to different. So if it's just vibrating the whole time, it might be something, but you're not allowed. <laughs> cause that was, that's the easiest thing. If you just got someone up there hitting the button and we can pick up the vibrations of whatever or just make a little sound, it'd be great. But, um, all you're allowed to do is hold up a sign. And all the same sign that flicks to numbers. It's only numbers or letters. You know, the, the flicky, the, the all black ones are the flick white and you can put letters and numbers. So you can use that or it's communication just through yelling. But when you got 50,000 people that you can't really yell or hand signals, um, or just you get on the phone. So there's not, not much else you can really do. Um, so that's why as a leader, you need to be switched on to make sure that what I'm thinking with most 90% of the time, we're pretty aligned. I mean, uh, well, the leaders and the coaches, we sort of know what's going on. And sometimes I've just looked at the box. So for the a game, for example, you're, you've just hit the front, it's two minutes to go. Everyone knows you You probably want to get some numbers behind the footy. So I'll, I'm normally the guy who goes, we'll do that. We'll go ahead of the footy or go behind. So I'll be communicating to JK, you need to get Jack Darling to come around. As soon as his ball's up, he needs to go to the wing and the wingman's coming back. I'm already talking about it because I sort of know and I'll look to the box and Simo will be going, Simo will be, yeah, yeah, thumbs up, yep, 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 yeah, do it, do it, do it. So that's the easiest way, but that's the easiest situation. We sort of do, yeah. But the thing is, everything changes. So like we got our, our game plan changes, probably not changes, but you tweak it at least two or three times a year. So you got sort of one call and one way of doing things. And, um, but that's the thing. Everyone's different. Some boys just like a verbal. Some of it, I can just pick it up by structure. Um, some guys need the sign and some guys need the phone. So we do everything. Everything you can think of, we'll, we'll just do it to make sure everyone gets it across. But we're big. The, the biggest thing is communication. So someone on the bench is getting told something that needs to get out to 18 players. If you do not tell at least three or four players, you're not doing your job. Even if you're a young kid, you're an 18 year old, you've got to communicate. Yeah. So that's a, that's a big thing. And, um, and that's why you need to be, your preparation needs to be great. I need to make sure this 18 year old kid is coming in. He knows what, you know, skin side help control is. He knows what that is. He, he, he needs to know it because if he doesn't, then he can't communicate it, which then uh, frustrates me because I've got to go to the bench and get on the phone, which takes too long, and then the game and then it's all over. So, um, yeah, I've we've I've been thinking about we were thinking about getting the baseball friggin' cap person. That'd be great, but um, yeah, no, they they restrict you a fair bit. So, the question is like the the hard questions that get popped up. Obviously, with a family, you don't want to let go of your family or fire your family. So, how do you deal with those, and who's responsible for dealing the dealing the blows? Yeah. So the comments I always had. Yeah, I talked about it before. Where you got to put your 
put your hat on. Unfortunately, in these times, you've you've got to you've got to put your hat on. Mark Hutchings is is perfect one. We lost him this year. If you ask me personally, right now, as Jeremy McGovern, I'm I hate it. He's he's does so much for our footy club. Such examples. He's a ripping ripping bloke. I, I love him. Um, but you put captain hat on and and footy club hat on. We need to move forward. Unfortunately, we need we need a spot on that list. We're we're looking to go to the draft and for the for the generations of the footy club, we probably need to let go of of thirty year old Mark Hutchings, who's a ripping fellow and I love him to death. But we need to we need to move him on um, so we can pick up these young kids and start developing them. So you you get it, but you get frustrated as well a little bit. But we we talk about it, and that's the thing is the boys when they come in and we we try and try and not push this on them, but give them an understanding that. You know the jumper that you're wearing. It's it's not yours. You're just using it. The number twenty is not my. It's not Jeremy McGovern's number twenty. It's not Dean Cox's. It's we we used it. We use this jumper, and it's going to be one day. I'm going to be doing the same things. They're going to be getting rid of me at some stage. Um, that's just the way it is. That's just the nature of it. But are you doing everything you can before you get get let go? So Mark Hutchings did. He made it to thirty. Not many people do. The average lifespan is three and a half years, I think, for an AFL footballer. So he's had a really good career. He's won premierships and, and he's done a lot of things. But I think when you first come in, that's, that's sort of, you've got to just in, sort of really put, push it on people. You go, look, this isn't forever. And this, these tough conversations and things are going to happen. And it's for the benefit of the footy club. It's the benefit of us. So when I leave the game and what Mark Hutchings has, he's, he's left our footy club a better place for being there. He generally, he has. Um, and that's what everyone's probably at our footy club is really striving to do is, when I leave one day, the same with, um, I speak about Coxie all the time and Glassy. These guys were making sure that I was trained up enough and I, I was, I was a good, good bloke who could lead this footy club going forward because they want to see it do well. When I finish, I want to see West Coast still do well. So yeah, that's, that's more, more the sort of mindset, um, that you need to have with, and, and the, the chats you need to have with, with boys at young age. Hutchie gets, he's a big boy. He, he understands it. He doesn't, I'm sure he doesn't agree with it. And I wouldn't, I don't really agree with it either, but I, I understand it. So it's more, yeah, so he's he's fine, but yeah, that's the thing. It's more, do you agree with it or do you understand it? You don't always have to agree with things, but you've got to understand them and why why it sort of has to be done. No, well, yeah, no, but I was I was over there with ten of my schoolmates. We we're doing all the full full moon parties, all that sort of stuff. I didn't try. I wasn't caring about what I was eating, what I was drinking. I was just being a young kid carrying on in Thailand. Um, if any, I was. I'm, I hope everyone's been in Thailand at some stage and Bali is very similar. It's cheap. You can get away with anything and it's fun. It was fun. I was, yeah, I was not 20, I think it was. And it, yeah, it was just a fun time. Being a 20 year old and silly, silly young man. But, um, no, nah, it was good fun. Um, guys, give Gov a huge round of applause. Thanks so much.